Did you know that you can predict ovulation by testing your saliva? In this video, we're gonna talk everything about saliva ferning to predict ovulation. Hi, my name is Susan and this is The Awesomes. Thank you so much for joining me today. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about saliva ferning, which is basically testing your spit to see if you are ovulating. So saliva ferning is, um, is a process by which you take a tiny sample of your saliva and you look at it under a microscope. So the ferning part of it is refers to the patterning of crystallization that happens um, during ovulation when you look under a microscope at your saliva. It's called ferning basically because this pattern looks like the leaves of a fern plant. So how does this ferning happen? So basically what happens during your menstrual cycle is before ovulation, a few days before ovulation, your estrogen levels will spike and another little thing that happens with an increase in estrogen levels is that your sodium levels also go up in your body. So then when your sodium levels are higher, basically what happens is the sodium in your saliva increases. So then when you check your saliva under a microscope, that is when the, the crystallization patterns are going to happen. Um, and any other time of the month, you won't find these crystallization patterns because your sodium levels are not going to be as high because your estrogen is not going to be as high. So basically um, this is tracking not necessarily for the actual ovulation. What it's actually tracking is your estrogen uh, increase, your estrogen spike, which happens a few days before ovulation. Okay, so we know that with an increase in estrogen, we're gonna find an increase in sodium, and this is what's gonna give us the crystallization pattern, the ferning pattern, but how do we actually test for that? So to test your saliva for this ferning pattern, you need a special handheld microscope. So you can find them on Amazon. I'm gonna link some down below in the, in the description. Um, so you can find them on Amazon. It's like a special microscope to test for ferning, but pretty much if you have a microscope at home, pretty much any microscope will work but it's just that most people don't have microscopes at home. So they've created this product where you can test it, a little handheld one that you can buy and test it yourself at home. So if you buy a microscope that is specifically for saliva ferning testing, then there will be instructions with the microscope. So follow along the manual that they give you, um, but I'm gonna give you some basic guidelines as well. So first of all, take a sample first thing in the morning. So you do not want to brush your teeth or eat anything or drink anything because that's going to affect your saliva. Um, if you do do the test later on in the day instead of in the morning, then just ensure that you have not eaten or drank anything or brushed your teeth or anything like that in the past few hours. So at least two or three hours. So when you take a sample of your saliva, you wanna take a sample from underneath your tongue and you really need the tiniest little, little drop of saliva. So about like one millimeter by one millimeter, tiny little drop. I should also mention that anything you are using um, during this process of put, placing the drop onto the slide, you wanna make sure everything is extremely clean or use like a brand new, brand new slide, uh, brand new everything, because if you touch the slide or if anything gets on it, particles of air basically, you, you don't want sodium from your fingers, like the sweat on your fingers or sodium from anywhere else in the vicinity to get onto this slide. So just be very careful, make sure everything is perfectly clean when you do this. So you're going to smear the saliva droplet onto the slide, the perfectly clean slide that has nothing else, no fingerprints on it or anything. Um, you smear that on the slide and make sure there's no tiny bubbles or anything like that that can interfere with, uh, with the microscope. So you'll then need to wait about five minutes just to ensure that the, uh, the slide is completely dry, that your saliva has dried up on the slide. And then you'll place it under your microscope for viewing. So again, when it comes to viewing your sample, um, 
on it through your microscope. You want to look at your specific microscopes directions or manual to see exactly how to do that because each microscope might be a little bit different. And then don't forget to record your results. So whether you have an app to record results or whether you have just a notebook or a calendar or whatever, um, record your results and that way, or an even better method might be taking a photo if you can through your microscope, taking some photos of what it looks like. Um, and this is important because you just want to keep track because the changes might occur slightly over a period of time. So you want to be able to identify when the strongest sort of ferning pattern is occurring and comparing that to when there is no ferning pattern. Because if you don't have these sort of um, results recorded, then it might be difficult to just go back from memory and try to figure out, okay, when was the actual ferning pattern and what did the not ferning pattern look like? At this point too, I strongly encourage you to go to my blog and check out, um, I'm going to put a link down below, check out the images of what, uh, of what the ferning pattern should look like compared to the image of what a, no, a non-ferning pattern <laughs> looks like. So the non-fertile uh, versus the fertile images. Um, check that out in my blog post or else you can obviously just Google on yeah, just Google up what the ferning pattern looks like, or hopefully uh, your, your microscope will just come with those images as well to give you a better idea of what exactly you are looking for. So the stronger the ferning pattern that you see, the closer you are to ovulation. So they kind of say that um, after the first signs of ferning pattern, because you're going to be testing this every single day, so after the first signs of seeing a ferning-like pattern, they say you will be ovulating about 72 hours afterwards, but that's just an estimate. It's different for every woman. Um, but I would suggest having sex as soon as you see the first ferning pattern because it's that's when your fertile window is going to be before you ovulate. So it's better to be having sex actually before you ovulate than just waiting until the actual day of ovulation. And if you need to learn more about that when it comes to um, timing of sex and when exactly your fertile window is, and even the basics of your menstrual cycle um, to give you a better idea of when you should be having sex in order to get pregnant, check out, I have a few videos and a few blog posts on this. Um, yeah, there's a few of them. So I'm just gonna link them all down below and give you a little description of what each video is about. And hopefully that will help you out with all of this fertile window stuff. So again, I said, look at the actual images to give you a better idea, but I'll give you a description of what the non-fertile versus the transitional and the fertile ferning pattern should look like. So during your not fertile period of your cycle, um, the pattern that you will see on your slide through the microscope will just be random dots and lines. So no ferning pattern, but you will see some things, just dots and lines. So then you'll start to go through sort of a transitional period if you're tracking every single day um, where your estrogen is beginning to rise and the sodium levels in your body are beginning to rise. So this transitional period, you will see that it's different than the, the non-fertile slide samples as there will be, uh, the lines will start to come together instead of just being separate lines and separate dots, lines will start to come together and begin to form just a few ferning like patterns. And then of course, when you get into the fertile period, your slide samples through the microscope will, will pretty much be dominated by these ferning patterns of lines. So yeah, as I said, check out the images. It's gonna help you a lot more than just this description. So another little bonus with testing your saliva, like a lot of these, um, these ovulation testing methods, you can actually test for pregnancy as well using this method. So what you will do is um, basically through your cycle, um, starting at menstruation until you ovulate, you have been testing your saliva every single morning before you eat or drink anything. So then what you'll do is after you ovulate, you will continue to be checking your saliva every single morning. 
So then what will happen is if you are pregnant, your estrogen levels again will begin to rise um, right before or during when you expect your next period to happen. And if you are not pregnant, then your estrogen levels should not rise at this time. They won't rise again until you ovulate again. So if you are using this method to also try to test for pregnancy, then what should happen is because uh, before your expected period, if you are pregnant, your estrogen levels will rise. This means that your sodium levels again will be rising. So if you see a ferning pattern appear right before you expect your period or right when you expect your period, then that could possibly mean that you are pregnant. Of course, to actually confirm pregnancy, you want to do a pregnancy test or go to your doctor or things like that that are actually meant to test for pregnancy. This saliva ferning is not going to be exact, but it's just another fun way that you can possibly test for your pregnancy. So the big question is how accurate is saliva ferning testing actually? And to be honest, it's not very accurate. So in theory, saliva ferning testing should really work, um, but the main reason why it's not a very accurate way of testing is basically due to user error. So because we're testing such a tiny, tiny droplet of saliva, if you were to get you know, a fingerprint on your slide or, or really anything gets onto your slide, that can really um, change the amount of sodium that's in your saliva. So your fingers have a lot of sodium on them and you know, anything, you get the tiniest little thing on there, it can change it. Another downside is that some women just don't show any ferning pattern in their saliva. And this could be due to a few different things. The ferning pattern can be affected by smoking, by taking certain medications, by having hormonal imbalances. Um, because it has to do with sodium, I'm sure even depending on the foods that you eat or how much liquid you drink, that could probably also have an effect on it. And things like brushing your teeth or using you know, different kinds of mouthwashes, all of these things, your dental health, all of these things can have a factor in your saliva and the amount of sodium that you have in your mouth and yeah, the overall ferning pattern. So I think that saliva ferning could be like a fun, interesting way to test for ovulation, but I don't think it is very reliable. If I was going to um, test for ovulation and I wanted, I was serious about getting pregnant as fast as possible, I would definitely try some other methods first. There are plenty of other methods to test ovulation and definitely subscribe to this channel because I am going over all of the different um, ways of testing for ovulation and I have another video also on the physical symptoms that you can feel within your body to signal that you are ovulating. So I'm gonna link all of these down below and as I said, please subscribe to this channel so you can get a lot more trying to conceive information and tips and tricks and that sort of thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.